on my friend, his eyes on you, you and me as well. I'm reading from Romans chapter 1, verses 14 through 16. Paul said, I'm debtor. I'm debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. You know who the barbarians are, don't you? That's us. The Gentiles were called the barbarians. both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. In these verses of Scripture, Paul makes three dynamic statements. Three statements that should impact the life of every Christian. These statements should shape the life of every Christian. <clears throat> they should determine the quality of our commitment and also determine the kind of service that we render. And yes, they should make a difference in how we behave at home, in the workplace, and in our social life. Here are those three statements. Paul said, I am not ashamed. That's the first one. And then he said, I am debtor. And third, I am ready. First of all, he said, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There was never a time in Paul's life after he was saved there on the road to Damascus, never a time that he backed away from declaring his faith and trust and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because he was not ashamed of the person of that gospel. That person is Jesus. My friend, if the time ever comes, when you're ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ making a difference what company you're in I don't care whether it's a bunch of hell raisers and ungodly people that you may happen to be among or whether you're among the finest living Christians on earth there ever comes a time when you're ashamed of Jesus then you need to re-examine your experience. But Paul was not ashamed of the gospel also because he was not ashamed of the power of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. He knew what that power had done in his own life changed him completely. He was on his road to Damascus to take captive Christians and persecute them. And he did a 180. By the time he got to Damascus, 
he was ready to line up with them and worship and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because he was not ashamed of the plan of the gospel. What is that plan? Here it is. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. He was not ashamed also of the gospel because he was not ashamed of the purpose of the gospel. What's the purpose of the gospel? Well, it's to get folks saved. It's to get folks saved. If you've never been saved, my friend, the gospel of Christ is God's message to you and me that we repent of our sin, receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. Paul was not ashamed of the preaching of the gospel either. In 1 Corinthians 1.21, the Bible says it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Unbelievers out there in the world felt like what Paul was doing was foolishness. Preaching the gospel, they think the same thing today. That every time we declare the gospel of Christ that we are just speaking foolishness. And so Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And then in the second statement, he said, I'm deader. I'm deader. What did he mean? Did he mean that he owed lots of money to folks? No, that wasn't what he meant at all. He felt that he owed something more, something more valuable than money. He felt that he owed them every bit of his time, his energy, and his sacrifice to share with them the gospel, God's message for salvation. We're debtors, my friends. world is full of folk out there who've never acknowledged Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. We're debtors to them to share with them God's message the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in order that they might come to know him as their personal Savior. He felt that he owed that debt to everybody. The Jews, the Greeks, the barbarians, whomever was without Christ, Paul felt like he was debtor to them and owed them doing whatever he could and whatever was necessary that they might receive his message. I believe that just as Paul, I'm debtor. If you're not a Christian this morning, if you never let Jesus Christ come into your heart, my friend, I confess to you I'm debtor to you. I owe you. I owe you my heart. I owe you my prayers. I owe you my message of the gospel that you might let Jesus come into your heart and save you. I'm not just saying that to be benevolent. I'm saying that as a fact, that I owe you that this morning. More than anything else in all the earth, I owe you that, that you might be saved. It's my responsibility to share with you. I was visiting in a home one time. And the lady said to me, 
Uh, you Baptist preachers are always recruiting. I said, yes, ma'am. That's what God called me to do, is to recruit for Jesus Christ. I am a recruiter. That's why I want to share with you the gospel, God's message, that you might be a recruit, that you might be saved. I'm recruiting for Jesus. I'm still recruiting for Jesus. If you're not here this, if you're here this morning, and you're not a Christian, you've never been saved, my friend. I'd give anything that I possibly can and could that you might trust Him as your Savior. And then the third statement Paul made, he said, I'm not ashamed. I'm not, I'm debtor. And the third, he said, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to preach the gospel in Rome or wherever folks are without Christ. He was ready to preach the gospel in that wicked capital of Rome. It was a dangerous place to do that too. It's a dangerous for a Christian to even live there. Much less be a preacher there. And when Paul signed up with God, he went all the way. God first spoke to me. If you don't mind me giving a little testimony. God first spoke to me when I was 15 years old. I want you to be a preacher. My answer was, no way. No way. Mm -mm. I looked at the preachers around me, especially my pastor, who was a godly man if there ever one ever lived. He was a short, stocky fellow with a, with a, well, with a flat top haircut. I can see him today. I know he's with the Lord, but I can see it. And he was so faithful to the Lord and to his people. And they nearly starved him to death. I said, I can't go that route. And so I backslid. Isn't that what you do when you turn God down? When you refuse to do what God wants you to do? You backslid. Next slide. And I did. But three years later, <clears throat> I was going to church in Houston when there was a powerful meeting one night. And I stepped out and told folks there that I felt God was calling me to preach. I didn't say I'm surrendering. I wasn't ready for that, I didn't think. Anyhow, we're never ready where we ought to be. Anyhow, went on and I went through World War II. And I made all kinds of promises over there. But when I got back home, I wasn't ready for that. I used my GI Bill to go in business. And you know what God did? He blessed me and prospered me in that business. In one year's time, I had one of the best paint and wall bi paper businesses in all of the city of Dallas. My wife and I built a beautiful home in one of the best sections of Dallas.
And then the Holy Spirit came down on me. Convicted me. I was never going to be happy until I turned my life completely surrendered to the Lord to do what He, he wanted me to do. And that night in that meeting, I went forward. And I said to the pastor, but I said, first of all, to the Lord, whatever you want me to do, wherever you want me to do it, it doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any difference. I'm turning it all over to you. I was saying, as Paul did, I'm ready. And I was. We sold that beautiful home, moved into a little unsealed barracks apartment so that I could prepare, go to school and get ready to do what God wanted me to do. What am I saying this for? I'm simply saying that I was saying like Paul, I'm ready. I'm ready all the way for Jesus Christ. I invite you this morning to embrace these three statements. Embrace these three statements that Paul made. First of all, that you're not ashamed of the gospel. Second, that yes, you are better. And third, that you're ready to let Jesus come into your heart and then control your life and do what he wants you to do. We're going to sing an invitation. If you'd come this morning, Surrender your heart and your life to Jesus. We invite you to do that. We're going to sing an invitation. This is God's invitation. Not mine, but yours. I invite you to stand, if you will, as we prepare to sing this invitation.